Hey everybody, it's Miss Hillis again. And um, so this is what we're gonna do day one explore. Um, students will read the passage about Queen Theodora um, and then the students will answer questions that are located in on the Google form. There's a link that is located on the right. So I'll put the video link in in just a couple minutes. Here's your article link um, and you'll click on it and it'll take you to .hub or if you're in class, you get a paper copy and then here's your Google form link. So let's get started. Queen Theodora. Theodora, early life. Though Theodora became the most powerful woman in history, in the history of the Byzantine Empire, little is actually known of her early life. It is known, however, that her father made his living as <clears throat> a bear trainer for the circus that performed in Constantinople. Theodora made her early living as an actress. In those days, being an actress was also synonymous with being a prostitute. In other words, actresses not only performed on stage, but also off stage as well. She was well known for her obscene and burlesque shows and her wild parties. Around the age of 16, Theodora became the mistress of a man who became the governor of Libya in North Africa. He mistreated her and she ran away, eventually making her way to Alexandria. In Alexandria, she converted to Christianity and changed her lifestyle. She eventually made her way back to Constantinople, but did not return to her old profession. Instead, she settled in the modest house and made a living spinning wool. So um, this first section just kind of gave you an introduction of what her was, early life was like and how she changed as she got older. Okay. Prince's story. Theodora was introduced to Justinian through mutual friends. At the time, Justinian was not yet emperor, but was in line for the throne. They fell deeply in love. The law, the law forbid the marriage of an emperor to an actress. Justinian begged his father, Justin, to change the law, and eventually he did, and so the two were married. Okay, so so basically um, had an interesting beginning, right? Actress kind of a little provocative, not necessarily appropriate by standards, um, decided to change her ways, meets Justinian, wants to get married, can't get married until the law has changed. Life changes a little bit. Nika Revolt. From all accounts, Justinian treated his wife as an equal and relied heavily on her advice. In 532, a chariot race got out of hand and fighting erupted in the streets. Mobs formed and created violence and chaos in the streets of Constantinople. Several senators saw this as an opportunity to overthrow Justinian. Justinian's advisors counseled him to flee the city, but Theodora told him that it was better to die a ruler than live as nothing. Justinian took her advice and sent the troops to deal with the revolt. The revolt was brutally suppressed. Nearly 30,000 were killed in the process, and historians have credited Theodora's courage for saving her husband's rule. Impact of Theodora. So she, she actually, like, was a big part of the ruling, and she helped her husband, right? Because if she wouldn't have stepped in and said something, um, she... She basically, he probably would have fled and he wouldn't be the ruler that he came to be. Theodora obviously had great influence over her husband and generally he used it for good. She used it for good. After the Nika revolt, together they rebuilt Constantinople. Much of it was damaged by the mobs and they built more than 25 churches over the empire. As, the, as Justinian revamped Roman law, whoops, Theodora convinced him to include laws that increased women's rights. She had laws passed that prohibited forced prostitution and gave women more rights in divorce cases. She also built homes for prostitutes and shelters for Christian leaders. So that gives you a little bit of, a, of um, some information. And then this is a little bit more detail about the actual riots. Okay. The Nika riots began during a cha chariot race at the Hippodrome in Constantinople in 532 and exploded as the Hippodrome was the next to the palace complex, where Emperor Justinian and Empress Theodora watched the chariot races from high above the crowd. Chariot races were intense events with rival groups supporting teams that matched their political goals. The rival factions were a combination of fans, street gangs, and political parties. So it wasn't just this person, this chariot racer competing against this chariot racer. 
there were political ties to that. So um, when one side or the other won, it wasn't just about that chariot racer winning. It was they felt like a political party or the political ties were getting ahead possibly or benefiting. Many in rival factions were angry with Justinian over high taxes and believed he was not the rightful ruler. A mob formed at the Hippodrome who wanted him overthrown and replaced with center Hypatius. Justinian and his government, government council were ready to flee the country as the riot spilled out of the stadium and across the city. A ship was waiting at the palace's private harbor to take Justinian and Theodora to safety in Thrace. When the empress spoke up, Theodora began her career as an actress, a profession considered unworthy of, pol of polite society. Their marriage has caused, had caused a scandal, but she became a strong defender of the throne. So she went from people not respecting her, and they probably still didn't, but she wanted to make a name for herself and for Justinian in the throne, but do it in a positive way. At this tense moment, she stopped Justinian and the guards and said, My lords, the present occasion is too serious to allow me to follow the convention that a woman should not speak in a man's council. Those whose interests are threatened by extreme danger should think only of the wisest course of action, not conventions. So basically they're saying, pick the best solution, even though that solution may be dangerous. In my opinion, flight is not the right course even if it should bring us to safety. It is impossible for a person having been born into this world not to die, but for one who has re reigned it is intolerable to be fugitive. May I never be deprived of this purple robe and may I never see the day when those who meet me do not call me empress. If you wish to save yourself, my Lord, there is no difficulty. We are rich over there is a sea and yonder are the ships. Yet reflect for a moment whether when you have once escaped a place to a place of security, you would not gladly exchange such safety for death. As for me, I agree with the adage that the royal purple is the noblest shroud. So basically, I think what she's getting at is, yes, you can flee, but you're going to leave the throne and you're going for something from being someone, right, and helping your people. And even though not everybody agreed, to basically nothing. And here's one thing that I thought of while I was watching this or reading this too, is if it, if common people were in this situation, they couldn't necessarily flee. They would have to stand and fight, right? So why should the emperor do that? That's just my thought. Her determined speech convinced Justinian and the other government leaders had been, and the other government leaders who had been preparing to flee. Justinian ordered his loyal tro troops to attack the rebels in the Hop Hippodrome, killing, according to the historian Procopius, over 30,000 rebels. Justinian then had Hyp um, or Hypatius executed and exiled the senators who had supported the riot. He then rebuilt Constantinople and the Hagia Sophia and ruled another 30 years. So, yes, it was challenging during that riot and during that time and making the right decision. But in the end, he and the people of the Byzantine Empire benefited. So you're going to come back over here once you've listened to the video or, or read it yourself. And you're going to click on the Google form and it's going to you're going to click on the link. And it's going to take you. Hopefully I did this right. And you're going to put your name, class period, and then you will answer the questions um, and then hit submit when you're done. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me if you're home or contact me. Um, if you're in class, go ahead and ask a question. If not, I'll talk to you soon. Have an awesome day. Hopefully it stops raining someday, right? Rain, rain, go away. All right. Bye-bye.